Thank you for having me. So today I want to discuss with you about uh, something I learned in the past month, which is JSONet. But first, let me introduce myself. So uh, my name is Julien Pivotou. I work in a company based uh, in Europe uh, named Inuit. So we do a lot of uh, consultancy about uh, open source projects. Uh, and I have been using Grafana since uh, at least four years now. So I opened my first issue and my first pull request in 2014. Uh, and it was already about uh, a problem that I had with just dashboard as code at that moment. So that's a pretty big topic for me. Um, so we use Grafana in a lot of different places and in a lot of different customers. and. We have the, te the tendency of, we want to do everything as code, like we do infrastructure as code, uh, we put any everything into Git, so it's very important to us to be able to do that with anything. And Grafana is no exception with that, so we really want to uh, do Grafana dashboards as code. But what's a dashboard? So a uh, Grafana dashboard is quite complex, actually, when you look at it. It's a big J JSON file, and inside it you have templates, which are now called variables in the UI, annotation, panels, links. In the, in the panels, you have like plenty uh, of different panels. Um, you have... Oops. You have plenty of different panels. You have uh, panels that come from plugins. You want to have uh, inside all of your panels the same error codes, the same uh, servers, for the same color for that server, that kind of stuff. And it's very really difficult to do that uh, manually. So if you update one dashboard and you want to update all of them, it's very difficult. And when you have, when you start using Grafana scale, like uh, you really get like thousands of dashboards, and you have the links navigation or the annotations, and you need to change all of them each time you change something, which is not really really practical. So there are two ways of solving that. So you can spend a lot of time in the UI fixing every single stuff by hand each time you change something. Uh, you can also uh, copy the dashboards. You can do that in the UI as well. That takes a lot of time. Or you can just say, OK, my, dashbo my dashboards, it's just code. I just put them into Git, and that will just work for me. And I am not the only one to have that problem, because there are uh, a bunch of other people who had the same idea as me and that say, OK, Let's just do dashboard as code. Then you have at least, at least six projects on GitHub. And you know how it works in IT. Like, if there is six projects, you need a seven project to just like fix, put everyone together, right? So I found about a, a language that's called JSONet. What JSONet is, it's an open source language that enables you to uh, produce JSON files. It's under the Apache license which matches uh, Grafana license. Uh, it comes from people at Google. And basically, you have a C++ implementation and a Golang implementation. And they just work the same way. Uh, the C++ implementation has some extra feature at the moment, but the goal is that uh, everything will move to Golang, hopefully. But you can already use Golang, uh, the Golang implementation to do uh, all the compilation, for example. So JSON is a DSL language that you, you need to, to understand and to learn. And once you know it, then you can generate JSON data, but in a sane way. It's a superset of JSON. What it means is that if you have a JSON file, then you can use JSONet on it. Just out of the box, uh, JSON is valid JSONet. So you can just take the JSON file, take it into JSONet, and it will just produce the exact same JSON files. Uh, it's a functional language. so. Uh, it changes a bit the way you, you see the things uh, when you use it. So it's sometimes a bit disturbing, but once you learn, it's very great. So what's like JSON it looks like? So uh, it looks like JSON. You have variables. You have a bunch of stuff. So we'll have a look at that. When you look at that code, uh, person one, Alice, hello, self that name, and person two, uh, which name is Bob. So that produces a JSON like this, hello, Alice, hello, Bob. That's the output of the first uh, thing. But JSONet, uh, it's not only variables. You have also like comments. So if you uh, design big, dash, big JSON files, then you cannot use uh, comments, because that's not JSON valid. You can in YAML, but not in JSON. So uh, JSONet enables you to actually uh, use uh, comments, which is really great. 
Uh, it enables you to put come at the end of the JSON file. You know, when we, you have an array in JSON, you cannot do that. And when you do some diffs of big JSON file and you want to add something at the end of an array, then you have uh, only usable diff because you have to add that small or to remove that uh, comma at the end of the array that kind of sucks in, in JSON. So this is really like, for if you would need to write it yourself, it's very easier to just take JSON to do that instead of just trying to uh, understand the JSON rules. This is way more natural. Also, like where in JSON you have like double quotes around key names in JSON that you don't have them, where it's not really necessary. You know, it's it will be static. Uh, so why would you have them? It's just very logical. But you can still use the first one in JSON, but uh, ideally you should use the second one so you have more simple uh, templates. Variables are also a thing, like I want to uh, use or to import a file or that kind of stuff, you can store that in a variable and use the variable at multiple places. That's also something that's really helpful. Uh, like if you want to put the customer name somewhere or the, the what you are uh, having in your dashboard and the, as a variable for your complete dashboard, then it's easy to do that as well. So you can reuse that all over the place. You have functions in JSONnet, like, OK, I want uh, to uh, reuse the same pattern in multiple different ways. Then you can just use a function to do that. And it takes parameters just like you expect it to, to behave. Like you can also import libraries. So in this case, we import a JSON library, and we take all the logic to create a dashboard out of that library. Then we call a function from that library, and then we get at the end of the dashboard. On top of that, you also have a standard library where you can actually take a string, uh, do replacement, uh, do maps, do insertion, uh, loops. Uh, all of that stuff is just possible uh, in JSONnet. The way you use it is very simple. So you take JSONnet and you uh, you take JSONnet and it will just output the JSON in the in, of, in uh, the standard output. And so you can redirect that to a file. But in the case of the dashboards and especially in Grafana 5, then you actually uh, can generate multiple dashboards from one single uh, JSONnet files. You see that later. And the last thing is that you can also you have also one way of formatting your JSON code so that there is no discussion like should you put that in that way or use that kind of spaces is unique so you can just format all your files in one way and if you also want to just uh, format your JSON file it's also working so it's very nice to for that as well like there is no discussion about style guide so. Uh, I designed Grafonet to uh, answer my needs. So Grafonet is a JSONnet library to build Grafana dashboards. Uh, it's available on GitHub. Uh, and basically, it's under the Grafana uh, GitHub space. So we follow the same uh, rules as Grafana, the same license as Grafana. So for those who are contributing to Grafana, it will be familiar for you. Uh, we already have tests. Not I need a, not a lot of documentation yet. Uh, and it enables you to just write your dashboard in SEM, but not like plain JSON in a way that you can actually diff and understand. So that's an example of how you build a dashboard with Graf Grafonet. So basically, you import Grafonet. And then you see, OK, I want a new dashboard. You put the title, and then you, you can put some uh, um, optional parameters, like the refresh time, uh, which time you want to go back, that kind of stuff, the tags. And then you can add the templates, create the templates, all of that uh, with Grafonet. Then if you want to create a folder, then you just make a file like this with just the name uh, of the JSON file that you want to produce. And then you import the different JSONnet files. There is a more complete example uh, on GitHub uh, where I show a dashboard to, uh, to see how you can use that to uh, make a JVM dashboard. And, but I will go to some highlights of what we also have. When you build a, a dashboard with JSON uh, in Grafana, Grafana, right, when you want to sort a value or a template, it expects you to uh, put a number there, which is not very practical when you write a dashboard. So we offer also helpers. Like If you put decreasing, then we know that it should be 0. If you put increasing, it should be 1. So we support all of that out of the box so that it's easy for you when you write those uh, dashboards to just say, OK, uh, sh should it be one, two? So no, we do that for you. We do the exercise for you. 
Uh, if you want to go further, you can build on top of Graphonet your own uh, dashboards uh, or, or your own structure. So like what we do is that we know that for each customer, we have two uh, primitive servers. And we always want to have a template that enables us to, to choose which uh, of the server we want to use, which of the primitive server we want to use. So on each of the dashboards, then we just uh, say, OK, we want to have a primitive template. And so that we have that by default on all the dashboards. And if you want to change some parameters, yeah, we, you can change the refresh time for a specific dashboard when you call that. So that's very, very easy to do. When it comes to folders, uh, we have multiple customers. So what you can also just do is to say, OK, I will just like uh, add on top of every title of the dashboard at the customer name. And then I will also change the UID of the dashboard to be prefixed by a customer name, so that you don't need to do that at the dashboard level, but you do that kind of at the folder level. And all of that comes out of the box with uh, Graphonet. And this is all use cases that we uh, need to document in Graphonet so that people really understand the potential of this. Another very great uh, thing you can do is just, OK, you download a dashboard from Grafana.com, but yeah, it's missing something, or you want to change uh, some stuff. But you can just say, OK, I take the dashboard from Grafana.com. From Grafana it's a JSON file. I just import it. Uh, I miss the import key reader. So you import it, and then on your own dashboard, you just say, OK, I will add the panels of that dashboard. And that's really working uh, nicely. So you can just take any dashboard, reuse that. It's already compatible with uh, JSONnet because JSONnet is a superset of JSON. If you want to standardize the color, so here you have a graph panel with just like uh, a query to uh, take the error rate. And then you see at the end, uh, we add colors.http, and that color.http is actually this, so it has a series of rights with the aliases and the colors that you want, so that you know that in all the dashboards you will have the same colors, and if you change that file, then it will be changed everywhere. So you have actual consistency between all of your dashboards. And the last thing which is really, really great with JSONnet is that if something is not implemented in Graphonet in our library, you can always like say, OK, I will just add something at the end, like this plus sort equal one, like uh, the template does not support uh, sorting already. So you can just say, OK, there is no field sort by default. I just added myself, which is also nice when you use custom plugins, because you can just design uh, the, the panel in Grafana, just take the panel as JSON and just copy paste it into a graph on it. And then it will just work off, out of the box. And you don't need to make a pull request first to support uh, that specific panel that only you are using or that maybe you are not sharing with your side world. So it's very nice to just being able to override anything and to reuse what's already there and uh, that kind of things. So how do we integrate with Grafana? So first, we already support Grafana 5 dashboards, uh, which was not really difficult, but we, we do it already. Uh, and in Grafana uh, 5, you can provision from files. So you can just produce any JSON file and then put them in a folder, and that will be just picked up by uh, Grafana automatically. So we don't really need to have a push model to go to Grafana. That kind of stuff is gone now, that you can configure Grafana only with files. Um, and it works really nice thanks to json m which produces multiple JSON files. So what's the roadmap of uh, Graphonet? It's still a very, very uh, recent project. So uh, I want people to test that, to give me their feedback what they want to go, wh where they want to go, if they're interested into that. And then we start implementing more features based on what users want. And maybe then we want to implement a layer abstraction. Like I want to graph uh, HTTP rate. So here is the, uh, the metric name and just build a dashboard for me, given that it's a primitive stuff. And if you do that, then if we do that, then you will not even be required to do, have a look at the Grafana interface anymore, because you will just say, OK, I will have something that I know works for other people, and maybe I will be just happy with that. And then we also need a good way to document it. So it's not easy for the moment to document uh, JSON libraries. So there are some work to, uh, to do that, but it's not there yet. So that's something on the to-do list that we want to document all of what we have so that people don't need to look at our code to know how to use that. Uh, but it's, we are on the way to, to find a solution for it so anyone can enjoy it. So 
thank you. So if you have any question, and don't forget to look at the GitHub project. Thank you. Thanks, Julian. Uh, we do have time for questions, if there are any. Uh, just raise your hand, and I'll, I'll get over to you. Yes. So my question is about Grafana 5. Uh, does your library support that, new, all new features of it? And yes. If not, then when it will support? Yes, so we are using Grafana 5 since the third nightly of Grafana 5. So uh, this, we use this in production with Grafana 5 already, yes. So we use the project internally with uh, 60 dashboards, so like 40 da unique dashboards and then 20 duplicate dashboards for different customers. Any other questions? Um, is there any ability to do external uh, requests like Ajax or anything like that to get data to use in the generation of the template? Uh, no, but uh, it should be very easy to just put that in a script that calls JSONnet. As long as you can do an Ajax query that returns JSON, you can use the result directly. Uh, and also, you can uh, in JSONnet, you can pass an external file as uh, the input of a variable. So like if you want a message of the day in your Grafana dashboard, so we have that also, then we have a file called message of the day and we pass it as a variable uh, directly into the dashboard so that you don't need to find where is the message of the day in the dashboard. No, it's a dedicated file with that content, which is also very nice. Uh, can you tell me a bit about your uh, process of creating a new dashboard? You probably won't start with uh, just with a, a blank JSON. Do you play with it in the interface and then look how the JSON is, is formatted afterwards? So honestly, now that we have 60 dashboards, when we create a new dashboard, I start with an existing one, where I know I can find uh, more or less what I need. Uh, but at the very beginning, yeah, it was going to the UI, seeing what the JSON is done. And But we want to make that easy, so that you actually don't need to do that. You just need to somehow open the GraphNet documentation and say, OK, I want an HTTP dashboard. I want to stack the values. This is how you do it. But now I go less and less into the Grafana UI. Uh, because this is very uh, readable and usable now. Well, I'm used to it at least. All right, thanks, Julian. Thank you.